All right, so this post is another example of uh, sort of like what I call a sandbox post. I didn't really have a point starting out. I was just seeing where it would lead, um, putting in, putting a sort of like a sequential thought stream or thought sequence, beginning with Kether, Chakma, and Bina, if you add them up in the original Hebrew. Kether, Kether Chakma, Vina, 62073 and 67 is 760, which is in Hebrew English geometry of the matrix, Arconic computer, spirit, Ipsos by the same mouth, uh, Themis, the Greek Mayot, Insidious, alien crop circles, and the alien holocaust, which these were just one things I had in the database um, that happened to you know, accumulate. And uh, there were just all these different ideas that I had um, in studying also this sort of subject. And 760, this Nuit, Arachne, Aphanes, or Aphanes, or Aphanes, I don't know how to pronounce that, but invisible. And those are the more important, I would say, but the Matrix, and Spirit, Ipsos, Themis, Kind of go with it. Um, set, 760 is obviously 76 times 10, and 76 is Ankh, which is the um, whole symbol, the Egyptian symbol of life, but also in a way the tree of life and the foot strap of the gods, and it's also the value of will, Vav, Yad, Lamed, Lamed, and or Phil, uh, but so the whole idea is kind of like, um, especially with verse 76 of chapter 2 of AL being the cryptogram, it's it's kind of like this number all about this sort of like code, this hidden code and um, of the will and the tree of life. And so multiplied by Malkuth or 10, it's, it's like the tree of life unfolded and obviously with the, the supernal triad, uh, invisible, arachne, the weaver, uh, 76 is obviously 13, seven plus six. And that goes with arachne and consciousness, 13 letters, the number of arachne's web, 13 and web. Serpentarius, another name for a fucus, the 13th sign of the zodiac, materialize object, secret key code, coincidental patterns, to hide, anarchist, organization, set up, bubbling, effervescence, effervescency, intumescence, gurgle, ooze, womb, that goes with that, to dwell, remain, sit, abide, inhabit, resemblance, likeness, image, pattern, form, frame, mold, framework, be hidden, extending, stretching out, be omitted, left out, to sacrifice, burn incense, hypnotization, hypnotizing, trance, separation, severance, um, it's like the whole fall. And so, basically, that being the supernal triad, it's also significant, if you think about it, because Arachne has 760. Uh, 761, I had pulled up, is, it says, where the Quitzcore wove, which is like this weird alien bird, he calls it the hell bird, um, against the light. Against the light glosses this verse, its number is 11, as all the numbers who are of us. The oracle is Osadagawa, which links Kabbalistically the Quitzcore with the child of a frightful spirit as came down from ye stars, Lovecraft and Dareleth, the lurker at the threshold. Um, 761 is also ether, matter, and energy, which Helena Blavatsky talks about in The Secret Doctrine as being the unknown god of science. All right, it's in page 668 that ether, matter, and energy is mentioned as the sacred hypostatical trinity, the three principles of the truly unknown god of science, called by them physical nature. And she goes on to talk about it and discuss how science and theology, um, spiritualism, theosophy, they all have a similar sort of goal and uh, 
Blavatsky is kind of ridiculed and uh, not given enough credit for how much work she actually did and going over all the secret doctrines, pretty much, of the world um, in the secret doctrine as well as Isis Unveiled. And I want to eventually get to uh, reading the whole entire secret doctrine chapter by chapter and possibly Isis Unveiled. Um, see, the secret doctrine was her sort of like re-release after knowing she could have written more um, of not really of the same thing in Isis Unveiled, but the same sort of goal, um, though it's based on the Book of Zion. Here in context, uh, it says, The reader has had the whole case presented to him from both sides, and it remains with him to decide whether its summary stands in favor or not. If there were such a thing as void, a vacuum in nature, one would find it produced, according to a physical law, in the minds of helpless admirers of the lights of science, who pass their time in mutually destroying their teachings. If ever the theory that two lights make darkness found its application, it is ever in this case when one half of the lights imposes its forces and modes of motion on the belief of the faithful and the other half opposes the very existence of the same. Ether, matter, energy, the sacred hypostatical trinity, the three principles of the truly unknown god of science called by them physical nature. Theology is taken to task and ridiculed for believing in the union of three persons in one Godhead. One God as to substance, three persons as to individuality, and we are laughed at for our belief in unproved and unprovable doctrines, in angels and devils, gods and spirits. And indeed, that which made the scientists win the day over theology in the great conflict between religion and science was precisely the argument that neither the identity of that substance nor the triple individuality claimed, after having been conceived, invented, and worked out in the depths of the theological consciousness, could be proved by any scientific inductive process of reasoning, least of all on the evidence of our senses. Religion must perish, it is said, because it teaches mysteries. Mystery is the negation of common sense, and science repels it. According to Tyndall, metaphysics is fiction like poetry. The man of science takes nothing on trust rejects everything that is not proven to him, while the theologian accepts everything on blind faith. The theosophist and the occultist who take nothing on trust, not even exact science, the spiritualist who denies dogma but believes in spirits and in invisible but potential influences, all share in the same contempt. Very well then, what we have to do now is to examine for the last time whether exact science does not exact precisely in the same way is theosophy, spiritualism, and theology do. In a work by S. Lang, considered a standard book in science, Modern Science and Modern Thought, the author of which, according to the laudatory review of the Times, exhibits with much power and effect the immense discoveries of science and its numerous victories over old opinions, whenever they have the rashness to challenge conclusions with it. One reads in chapter 3 on matter as follows, what is the material universe composed of? Ether, matter, and energy is the answer. We stop to ask, what is ether? And Mr. Lang answers in the name of science, Ether is not actually known to us by any test of which the senses can take cognizance, but is a sort of mathematical substance which we are compelled to assume in order to account for the phenomena of light and heat. And what is matter? Do you know more about it than you know about the hypothetical agent ether? In perfect strictness, it is true that chemical investigation can tell us little or nothing directly of the composition of living matter, and it is also, in strictness, true that we know nothing about the composition of any material body whatever as it is. And energy? Surely you can define the third person of the trinity of your material universe. The energy is that which is only known to us by its effects books on physics. Pray explain, for this is rather hazy. In mechanics, there is actual and potential energy, work actually performed in the capacity for performing it. As to the nature of molecular energy or forces, the various phenomena which bodies present show that their molecules are under the influence of two contrary forces, one which tends to bring them together, the other to separate them. The first is molecular attraction, the second force is due to vis viva, or moving force. 
Just so, it is the nature of this moving force, the vis viva, that we want to know. What is it? We do not know is the invariable answer. It is an empty shadow of my own mind's throwing, explains Mr. Huxley in his physical basis of life. Thus, the whole structure of modern science is built on a kind of mathematical abstraction, on a protein substance which eludes the senses, Dubois Raymond, and on effects, the shadowy and elusive will-o'-the-wisps of a something entirely unknown to and beyond the reach of science, self-moving atoms, self-moving suns, planets, and stars. But who then, or what, are they all if they are self-endowed with motion? Why then should you, physicists, laugh and deride our self-moving Archaeus? Mystery is rejected and scorned by science, and mystery is the fatality of science, as Father Felix has truly said. Science cannot escape it. The language of the French preacher is ours, and we quote it in Isis Unveiled. Who, he asks, who of you, men of science, has been able to penetrate the secret of the formation of a body, the generation of a single atom? What is there, I will not say, at the center of a sun, but at the center of an atom? Who has sounded to the bottom the abyss in a grain of sand? The grain of sand, gentlemen, has been studied 4,000 years by science. She has turned and returned it. She divides it and subdivides it. She torments it with her experiments. She vexes it with her questions to snatch from it the final word as to its secret constitution. She asks it with an insatiable curiosity, Shall I divide thee infinitesimally? Then suspended over the abyss, science hesitates, she stumbles, she feels dazzled, she becomes dizzy and in despair says, I do not know. But if you were so fatally ignorant of the genesis and hidden nature of a grain of sand, how should you have an intuition as to the generation of a single living being? Whence in the living being does life come? Where does it commence? What is the life principle? Do the men of science deny all these charges? Not at all, for here is the confession of Tyndall, which shows how powerless is science even over the world of matter. The first marshalling of the atoms on which all subsequent action depends baffles a keener power than that of the microscope. Through pure excess of complexity and long before observation can have any voice in the matter, the most highly trained intellect, the most refined and disciplined imagination, retires in bewilderment from the contemplation of the problem. We are struck dumb by an astonishment which no microscope can relieve, doubting not only the power of our instrument, but even whether we ourselves possess the intellectual elements which will ever enable us to grapple with the ultimate structural energies of nature. So, yeah, I don't want to go on too much. You can go read it. And eventually I'll get to it, hopefully. But uh, it's just interesting. She's talking about this sort of vacuum and void and the structure. Again, there's all the every number is infinite. There is no difference. Yet the relativity and the tables and the connections between them and what the cells or the the numbers contain in terms of data is uh, very important for a sort of practical understanding of how our language and our thought manifests and how therefore there is a practical aspect to that in you know consciously formulating certain things like what, whatever it be and uh, rather than being sort of unconscious you know like bees droning around not fully understanding the code uh, which we're operating on. And obviously, yeah, so I mentioned uh, 761 is Satan or spider, really. Spider is 359. If you add it up, spider. And Akbish, which is the Hebrew uh, for spider. And... So if you think about it, 761 is kind of like the thread of the spider, hence, you know, the thread of life, the gematria code. And if you think about the full, you know, the full descent of the spider uh, would be like 769. And if you look at 769, weaving a wreath for Pan, see remembering Alistair Crowley for an account of the vision of Pan in the garden at Netherwood. 
769 is the spider, most importantly, when you add up the spider. Uh, using a tau. And the web of arachne, obviously. <laughs> 760. So it's like the descent of the spider, the manifestation of the spider. Uh, and in a way, 769, which I didn't even realize, oh yeah, I guess I did, is, is a form of Satan or stone, the stone that fell from heaven, uh, which again, that's the abyx stone or um, the whole stone of manifestation, the secret ion, which the perfect ion, perfection is 666. So yeah, the 760, 761, 769, and You'll see if you look at a whole database, the sort of progression and unfoldment and the interconnection, the coincidental patterns. Um, so yeah, you could look all just all these things. Um, let's see. Seven sixty, the supernal triad plus three. So like the three points, or to make a triangle, um, is the formula, the geometric key, geometric computer, or hypercube, and the Hebrew-English geometria of nothingness, and Jewish geometria of void, as well as the simple geometria of mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth. So that kind of connects, obviously, with this, with the Nuit, Arachne, 13, um, it's chapter 13 that the beast and all that is in. And obviously 12, I was thinking of how 13 being the center of the circle is sort of the beast in the abyss. Instead of adding 3, add the triangular number of 3, 6. So you have 766, the number of sun, Samet, Vav, non-final, whose number is 6. Material prison, the cube transformation and no boundaries. 766 is also the number of the manifestation of Babylon, which also equals 247 in simple geometria, the number of the double current of Mayot. And 247 has come up recently for me in a few different ways. You can think of it as 24-7, and it's a sort of geometry number of time. And let me pull it up. Here in verse 99, Kenneth Grant mentions it as Lahari, a flood, um, the red flow of the feminine mysteries, Ram, name of the nocturnal demon, Therion, the beast, Ikpon, or Ikpavan, obscurity in darkness, Mizar, also 247 is a star in the constellation Ursa Major, Typhon, 247 again denotes Makam, Ain, empty space, and it also enumerates the mysterious term kafnia, which is the backwards eye, or the inner eye. And he mentions it a few times, but here again he mentions it as the beast. Uh, the beast's mark was the cross, the cross in the circle, or that uh, cross with crosses on the ends marking the place of the crossing, which implies miscegenation encompassing alien consciousness. It is Cthulhu that dies, but that is not dead, which can eternal lie. So why should Cthulhu, usually 81, be written as 215? The difference is 134, how subtle is the play of the great old ones. 134, Syngok, the violent gas that spoke of the crawling chaos, Nyarlathotep, and the faceless or headless, the sun below the horizon, the sun in Amenta, Osiris, and the sun in the womb of Hathor, Isis, the home of Horus. That is not all, for 134 is again Mabin, the lost word of the Masonic third degree restored by Crowley. It has the value of 93, the Eon of Horus, plus 41, the Eon of Ma, or Ma-Ion. Uh, 93 plus 41 is 134, which is also the number of Al Gol, in the present context, not the star of that name, but a dimension recently explored by adepts of the Ecclesia Gnostica Alba, See Beyond the Mob Zone, chapters 12, 13, and 14. The implication is that Al Gol, which is an aot of the Mob Zone, 
houses the vibrations of the two eons, and see commentary to the next verse, a third, that of Zane. The Oracle 247 contains further cognate correspondences. It designates Mizar, the sexual part, the Kamite Mest. Mizar is also a star in Ursa Major, typifying the goddess of the north, Nuit Typhon. Again, a metathesis of Mizar, Zarim, means a flood, the red flood of the feminine mysteries. Kafnia and Sinsin Wa, whose raven, Black Wing, is a zeotype of Set, the first or oldest god. So again, 247 is all about this sort of, you could say 247 is this sort of like outside the circles of time number. Um, being the number of 24-7 or the earth, a sort of earth time cycle and just the, um, that's why Michael Berto kind of talks about how, um, the numbers and the angles represent sort of connections between dimensions. Oh, and as further coincidence grants Liber Pene Prenumbra, the received text by Nima and Hadna, also equals 766, the manifestation of Babylon. That was 1974. Uh, when it's added to 7, the Sephiroth below the Abyss, or the Ruach, 767 is obtained. 767 veils a powerful significance in that it is Bina reflected by Doth. And since 67 or Bina is right on the veil of the abyss, uh, it's reflected into 767. Oh, and connect, in connecting from 769, which would be you know the spider and the descent of the spider, Arachne, um, or the manifestation, Sahasrara, um, 770 also goes on further in the commentary, and he says that as our chanting mounted higher, the palm... The poem, Kaf, a poem, is one of the recurring motifs in the book Akbish. The verse reverts to the chanting of the invocation of Pan, which flowed spontaneously from the lips of Therion and Aosic as they strolled through dappled sunlit woods from the guest house Netherwood to the hermit's hut. See Grant, remembering Alistair Crowley. The oracle is Phoenix or Phoenicia, meaning the country of palms. See Inman, Ancient Pagan and Modern Christian Symbolism, page 128. Note the insistence on the palm. The Phoenix was Crowley's magical name as inner head of the OTO. 770 equals Sin, which links the foregoing symbolism to the vision described by the Virgin, Alchemia, in the House of a Hundred Raptures, as the guest of Mrs. Sin Sin Wa, see Romer's Dope. And 770 is not only the Phoenix, but also Horus, and also Melissa Comeo, Apiary, or Hive, going again with the Hive of Sleeping Bees, because all this stuff is sort of unconscious, I guess you could say, until you actually record it in a database and are able to look at it um, numerically. Everything in number. So, hold on. 767 is the number of the fire snake and shaitan, the older form of Satan, as well as the Antichrist. Reversed, 767 would be 676, which is 26 squared. 26 being the number of God, or also uh, the reverse of yod heh vav -Heh, which is Satan, in whose likeness man was formed. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Furthermore, 676 is the number of the branch, a title of Jesus, but also, again, relating to the tree of life. Uh, the triangular number of 7 is 28, 1 through 7. So, uh, with the days and the Ruach and the unfoldment, 760 plus 28 is 788. The Path of Aeon, um, which is the Devil card, which also equals 888 in English gematria. The Goddess Hecate, the Trinity, the Secret Path, and obviously reflecting Jesus. Again, reflect the reflection um, of the dual one. Humanity, which equals 666 in English gematria. The illusion created by the Archons i.e. parasites of the pure simulacra. And again, the, the plifoth or the splitting, the fractions and um, the broken mirror symbolism. Uh, that's what this whole, the, the tikkun olam being the, again, six, 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 synonymous with the fall or the breaking. Uh, it's that, that's the kind of, 
dual polarity, which um, the solution is kind of one with the problem in a way. And it's hard to say, it's hard to express that except through, again, the circle. The circle is six at six. And so it's like the fall and then the one, the coming back around. Uh, the Hebrew word for the tree of life, ox hayim, equals 788, as does the secret wisdom, chakma nestora. So obviously the secret wisdom is the, um, the sort of, sort of, it's the fact that it's secret or hidden in a cult until you find it, until you see, uh, is also the number of the secret name, which has yet to be fully uttered. The secret name or the lost word, um, the hidden, the hidden word, the hidden phallus, which again, are all one in the same, but it's really the zero and the infinity and everything in between. So it's not, to, it will never will be fully uttered. That's the Om and the Mu. And obviously that secret word, Mu Om, of, um, I guess, the OTO and the AA kind of veils that. Mu Om is 93. And like, but like Grant says, Mabin being the babe, crowned with the odd is 103. And again, a chod in the egg. So 788 is also uh, the name, which we were just talking about. Uh, the vine, which goes again with the branch, the tree of life. Realization, fulfillment, fruition, materialization, to bring together, to go crazy, to lose one's mind. Um, be forgotten, dream, electric, electronic, electrical text words, this whole thing, event, occurrence, incident, happening, composer, songwriter, eddy, whirlpool, vortex, swirl, maelstrom, messenger, emissary, envoy, delegate, minister, to blow the trumpet, investigation, debriefing, to swear, take an oath, to violate, ravish, be enslaved, again, the sleeping bees, to forget, ignore, wither, be forgotten, like a lot of this information. 49, the number of 7 times 7 plus 760 is 809, which is the number of the Nephilim, as well as locusts, who come from the smoke of the abyss. And I was thinking uh, that's also basically Theta and Omega, which is like T.O., the Typhonian order, or a sort of transliteration of the Hebrew Oth, the word for time. And the whole mysteries of time and Saturn and Kronos chaos is pretty much what the Typhonian order uh, investigates. The locusts of revelation are likely to be the third of the angels that became demons legion, the same Nephilim giants who were cast out in the deluge. Yeah. And 37 is said to be the number of Lucifer. 37 is also, um, it's a lot of things. It's Halab, which is the heart, and it's one third of one one one. So one 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 being the white light, and uh, God is one, and um, all the things about the sort of unity and in tri the Trinity. It's really the Holy Trinity, and so thirty seven, um, I think, does represent this sort of like it's the three and the seven, which is the split between the supernal triad and the ruach. And obviously the first verse of the Bible of Genesis is 37 times 73 or the sum of 1 through 73. 73 being the reverse of 37, but both being Chakma. Chakma being the second sphere and obviously the uh, wheel of time kind of. Obviously, well, it's not really the wheel of time, but it's the zodiac. And uh, Binah is space but also time as Saturn, but Chakma is kind of, they both overlap. And so it's like, they're both space and time and the duality between them and being above Doth, there is no sort of duality, but um, Chakma, I don't know. Kenneth Grant talks about Chakma a lot, being obviously the Magus and um, Masloth. He actually mentions how Masloth and 483 connect um, on page 483 of the Ninth Arch. Uh, 
So I'm getting ahead of myself, but anyway, in Jewish Geometry 809 shows to relate some very relevant words and phrases, such as vril, the magical force, of, of which Kenneth Grant notes is a phonetic permutation of hrilu, an expression signifying, according to Crowley, the shrill scream of orgasm, or the metaphysical ecstasy that accompanies Congress with non-human entities. In the heart of the master, Crowley defines hrilu as the word of the dove, an early Typhonian zootype. See page 110 of Beyond the Mob Zone. Vril, The Power of the Coming Race, was also a book written by Sir Edward Bulwer-Lytton in 1871, which describes a subterranean alien civilization which uses Vril. Vril, The Power of the Coming Race, in uh, Jewish Demetrius 2414, Extraterrestrial Visitation of Earth, What Crashed in Roswell, and The Truth About the Roswell Crash. See again, and these are just things that have come up either in that database or in my own research, but it's also every number is infinite, there is no difference, and the number 26, uh, which lamb is also, lamb being 26, again, re goes back with the reflection of God, 26. Ironically, subterranean aliens also equals 809 in Jewish Demetria, as well as the phrase, the alien trilateral insignia. For more information on which, see my post entitled Spheres of Initiation. 809 is also the number of aliens from Sirius, about which see the Sirius mystery, um, as well as the Nomo from Potolo, see also the Sirius mystery. Lastly, 809 is the number of Andra Mainu, the Zoroastrian spirit of destruction, connecting again with Satan and uh, time. If the number of Doth, 474, is added to the supernal triad, the number 1,234 is formed. 1234, uh, to be referred to, be cited, stable, stall, livery, warning, admonition, tip-off, caution, caveat, monition, presage, letter, note, missive, epistle, ignorance, illiteracy, ignorantness, nescience, benightedness, boorishness, criticism, review, revisal, knock, stricture, censorship, censure, animadversion, audition, examination, inspection, long, period, generation, habitation, dwelling, period, age, generation, period of time, generation, uh, those living during a period, self-justification, apology, excuse, to scar, be scarred, be cracked, split, attainment, achievement, obtainment, procurance, reaching, comparison, similitude, analogy, analog, equalization, equation, driving mad, acting crazily, madness, Ventilating, airing, success, skill, profit, skill, uh, inquiry, investigation, inquisition, freedom, liberty, manumission, emancipation, stupor, days, concealing, erasing, blurring, fogginess, fuzziness, be disguised, masquerade, be counted, numbered, animal, beast, brute, religion, faith, belief, gospel, law, rule, decree, to fuel, briefing, Disguise, disguisement, debriefing, interrogation, questioning, correspondence, exchange of letters, agreement, similarity. One, two, three, four is the number of the manifestation of the egg on April 2nd, which coincidentally equals 397 in simple gematria. And 397 is the ending of the words as abrahadabra, the last verse of the book of the law. And it is significant that 220, the number of the verses in the library itself, when added to 397 is 617, which is half of the equation of uh, 1234. Not only is 397 another enumeration of the secret name, but it is also the number of the egg of the eon. Which eon? The eon of Mayot. The ninth arch gives Aosic for 397, uh, Kenneth Grant's magical name. The number of the verse saying, at the heart which Grant says may refer to the core of the sigil of Aosic, which an egg, or simply the cipher zero, uh, is at the center. On page 366, Grant himself declares, it's all in the egg, i.e. in lamb. What is all in lamb? The eon of Mayot. The egg, furthermore, is the triple stone, the triple egg of lamb's Atu. 397 plus 424, another number of my name, happens to be 821, Ma'ion. And we'll look at 397. First, uh, before I go to 397, in 393, he goes through the symbolism. And he says, The fluted pillars, columnic, the faces of young satyrs, their equivocal smiles not rendered less sinister by the flames that lit in flashes. 
the numbers 17 and 393 comport a wealth of Typhonian symbolism, the major features of which are Zane and Sefek, whose names mean seven. Sevek is a survival of Kefek, or Kepsh, of the seven stars, who was adored at Ambos as the living word. 393 enumerates the parts or sections, kalas, of the great seal of the OTO. The eye in the triangle, Osh, O, or I, A-N, 70. The pyramid or triangle of fire, Shin, 300. The dove, bird of air, or Aleph, 1. The grail, Cheth, 8. The phallic yod, 10. And the glyph of Venus, Daleth, the door, 4. It's 393. This numerical combination yields Osa Chid, 393, a metathesis of Aosic, 389, plus 4, the Venusian key of the door, Daleth, which is displayed in the sigil of Aosic. Aosic is 389, is Belisama, flame like, uh, viz. the candlesticks, a name of the planet Venus identified as Astarte, queen of the skies of Baal, she being the consort of Bel. So at the heart, basically, of the sigil, 397 is a form of Aosic. At the heart may refer to the core of the sigil of Aosic, an egg or simply the cipher zero. It may be significant that this verse is attributed to the path of Kaf. Kaf means a palm together with the egg. The palm forms one of the clues given by Amalantra to Crowley in connection with the new knowledge which he was to find in the egg. And the new knowledge is the... Um, new geometry, the new geometry, the new formulas and of the new eon, um, and pretty much anything outside the circles of time or beyond the sun. Um, they say there's nothing new under the sun. And if you think about it, Sirius is 346. Well, the sun behind the sun is also 346. And that's not to say that Sirius is literally the sun behind the sun or Doth. Um, Doth is actually not a localized body of any sort. Again, it's the space-time continuum. And again, it's the reflection of... I don't know, it's not really even just the reflection. It's the schism or the breaking. And that's why the sun behind the sun, Sirius being equivalent, it doesn't literally mean the sun behind the sun is Sirius, it just shows that it's a sort of embodiment uh, being the next solar system, um, the next star system. Uh, 346 has its own correspondences, but obviously all these things interconnect. The void, not, or uh, zero, egg at the heart of Aosic, this in the previous verse may imply that the sigil of Aosic is the nest, silba, containing the egg in which the new knowledge gestates. Number 19 is Chava, or Eve, to manifest, show forth, Eve, is the feminine glyph. The number 21 indicates the path of Kaf. The verse, uh, verse 22 is void, zero, egg, and the oracle is 398, Cheth, Pe, Shin, Yod, meaning book. It was in the cryptic candlestick that the grimoire of the Grants was discovered. The grimoire sought by Aleister Crowley, Phineas Black, and other occultists, which held extra-dimensional keys that unlocked the tunnels of Typhon in the cells of Set, which is basically the Gematria database, or again, the primal grimoire. This book, Akbish, or the Book of the Spider, is a part of the grimoire insofar as it enabled Arim and Aosic to locate its source. So yeah, I would. Say, that's why I include this in my whole um, database because it's very significant in so many different ways. But let's go on with this. The egg of lamb is the globed priest mentioned in Al chapter three verse thirty four. Whether or not the Mayan calendar end date, which happened to be uh, the same value, is relevant regarding this, will soon be seen. Which again, I guess. It's not. It was relevant in the sense of all this data co coalescing and coming to me. The number for these phrases is 1128, the triangle or triangular sum of 47. 47 is the number of Babylon in simple gematria, and her counterpart, the beast, as well as the tetragrammaton yod heh vav -Heh, or IHVH. 
1234 or 1234 is also the number of the mark of the beast, which when 666, the number of the great beast, is subtracted, 568 remains, another number of the egg of lamb, the magic egg. 568 is also a number of Chosek, darkness. And 1,234 in the New Eon English Kabbalah is the number of Al chapter 1, verse 46. Nothing is a secret key of this law. 61 the Jews call it. I call it 880,418. Now I would like to deviate from this analysis of the Kabbalah of the Tree of Life and mention that the star composed of the 13 letters of my name has some more synchronicities which I would like to record to further validate my connection with the Eon of Mayat or Ma'ion. Um, my name basically is 13 letters, and if you take it as a hexagram uh, and you divide or you know split up the triangles, it's 858 and 1089. 858 is the number of odd loss built in full, and 1089 is 33 cubed. But 858 plus 1089 is 1947. The number of the secret has been revealed, and uh, when you add the A, that would be in the middle. It's um, when the central A is added, the number 1948 is obtained, which once again was the year Frederick Chad announced the incoming of Ma Ion, March 17th and April 2nd. See the Typhonian Trilogy, particularly Night Side of Eden, Outside the Circles of Time, and Hecate's Fountain. Also, I would say Cults of the Shadow, Chapter 8. 1948 is uh, the Hebrew word for correspondence, exchange of letters, agreement, and similarity, and Hebrew gematria system in Jewish Gematria. From 1948 to 1992, a period of 44 years, or 13 plus 31, elapsed. From 1904, the first appearance of the egg in verse 49 of AL chapter 1, to 1992, a period of 88 years elapsed, 17 plus 71. When counting both triangles of my name in hexagram form, the number of letters totals 19, which is how old I was in 2011 when initiating the Eon of Mayot 107 years after the Eon of Horus. The year 1992 is also not only composed of 821 Ma'ion or August 21st and 1171, a form of my name, but also 13, the number of letters in my name, times 102, the simple geometry value of my name, um, and which is 1326 Archons plus 666, the Archons illusion in humanity. So that's basically 13, the number of the hexagram in the stone, or basically the star stone. And 102 is the number of the transmission between dimensions, or Lamal. And 666, the number of the stars, or stellar knowledge. I'm now growing tired of writing about this tonight. I've probably said enough for now. So yeah, it was just a sort of me trying to see where this would all go. And it's, it's kind of hard not to when you're first... Uh, getting into something like this, not to find personal, um, you know, correspondences or connections. And in some ways, that's the only way you can find it relevant for yourself, at least. Otherwise, you're like, well, what's the what's the point? Um, but then over time, you'll see it's not so personal. You'll see it kind of manifest in other people's lives. Like if you read about Crowley and his gradual... Um, coming to learn the Kabbalah and then also how it, how the book of the law kind of updated his own knowledge and the existing knowledge of, um, of the Kabbalah and of how all these things work. Kenneth Grant kind of did the same thing. Um, he slowly saw these personal, all these numbers in his own personal life, as well as in books and in other people's lives Frederick Chad, Nima, and then he saw how it kind of all ties together. And so def despite the fact there's all these numbers and all these concepts, I don't know, it just takes a lot of looking and holding in your mind, like, uh, what is it? Entertaining an idea without accepting it necessarily. Uh, like, especially with the alien stuff. Just to, because I mean, it kind of does end up coming into relevance when you study again the new knowledge and the alien geometry and the especially like the Enochian system which that's what I think the Enochian magic and all that stuff represents <clears throat> is this sort of uh, fourth dimensional and like level of understanding um, in physics and as well as just 
how uh, language isn't necessarily just linguistic and using letters. It's also numerical and mathematical, and that's obviously the universal language. The language of the universe is 555, and I talked about that in the mathematical basis of psychic abilities, spiritual phenomena, and the religious instinct. And they call this in this uh, documentary the language of the universe. And I just calculated it, and I saw all this stuff, and I had to make a post, which, again, I'll get to all these deeper posts as I get to them. But, uh, again, it's just surprising how people will deny, 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 deny the, the usefulness, the validity, the fact that other people, like, just, it's, it's, this sort of stuff is everywhere. Like, the Masonic coffin has 555 on it, and the coffin is 555. So don't tell me that these people don't know this. And not only that, there is a lot that they don't know, though, because, again, they haven't been privy to the sort of updates. Uh, most people deny Kenneth Grant's books are of any value and can't even read uh, a few pages, let alone a chapter, let alone one, let alone nine. So for the few who do and can and will see the inevitable, you know, like, again, like this post doesn't have much of, of a single point other than um, there's a few things, obviously, you can see just how this sort of thing works. It's like a, a spider web and the spider is this sort of like imitation of God in the sense of instead of the supreme unity of not, it's the supreme unity of all, again, all and not. 1331, 131 one is pan. Pan is that sort of idea. So this is my Catabraxis, who I got on my birthday in 2010. Um, and actually, like, believe it or not, something told me just like the day before, really, to look for a, a white cat. On, I looked on Craigslist and there was lo and behold a white cat that someone had found in a parking lot she was like a veterinarian and she took him and got him neutered so that he wouldn't being astray this whole fucking ice machines really annoying day I named him Abraxas just because you know it equals 365 and he's kind of like my birthday cat and then the next year, um, I wanted to get him a friend for when I was at work, and so I got him his friend Kansu, which was, uh, he was like the runt of the litter and the only solid gray cat that one of my friends in Arizona had, and she uh, knew I was looking for a gray cat, so he came about in 2011, and then my black cat, I was looking for a black cat, and I adopted her from Petco. And uh, they're my little supernal triad kitties. And I got a Braxis before, obviously, the whole egg thing in 2010. And that was when I graduated from high school. And uh, I don't know, just like slowly everything from that day, really. Uh, well, there was just certain days in 2009, September 9th, 2009. I was pretty much like super, like I was just very aware that there was something to the number nine. Oh, and then almost three years, well, I think it was exactly three years to the day, September 9th, 2012, I met someone who basically really resonated with everything I was like learning. She, like, um, and all the sort of like, I just, it was someone, I met someone I could really tell all of this stuff to and who would listen and who not only listened, but told me like, basically showed me all sorts of other things, like opened a whole doorway because basically the whole daughter formula of the Tetragrammaton, I didn't even fully understand, but the 107 thing, and I knew it was like, the egg and had to do with the final hay, but I didn't really understand it. And so 
she has like was born in 1974, the same year as you know the book, the library Pene Penumbra was received by Nima, and just a few other things happened. I think Night Side of Eden was that year, or was published that year, and uh, I don't know. It's just weird the whole dates and the cyclical occur reoccurrence, um, especially of the egg. If you think about the numbers of, again, the times and the time cycles and the dates, uh, I've found a lot of stuff regarding it, like the alignment or date alignment is 999, and again, not September 9th, 2009 was this alignment for me. Also, 999 is itself uh, the alignment of just all the, all, obviously, the values themselves. But then I knew I needed to write this book, Liber 999, um, and I, I didn't know what to call it really. But then I just I wrote a book called Liber Mayan, and I took the name Mayan as a sort of like magical name, you know, just because I didn't want to put my real name online. And uh, it has the same value though of 102, and in Liber 418, it's, it says it's the great magician and. Crowley says that the like magicians of the future will use numbers or mathematics. Anyway, I found out later on that Liber Mayan, if you take n or none final, a 700 is is 999. And then I also found out later on that the eon of truth and justice is 999, and all these other things since then. And it, it's just like too spot on. Frederick Chad, Kenneth Grant. The, Crowley or Therion didn't even see these values because I think they're they're too obvious. They're so obvious, and that was one of the sort of like proofs of um, Crowley would say about the key of the Book of the Law, and especially the cryptogram, was that it would be so obvious that it would just be like, holy fuck! Like uh, I'd have to pull out the commentary, but. I'm trying to make this short. Anyway, uh, if you read Kenneth Grant's uh, Beyond the Mob Zone, page 173, he mentions the number 365, Abraxas, uh, and how it's 5 plus pretty much the, the circle of 360. And it's because of obviously the elliptical orbit. But he relates it back to the word secretion. Um, with a cough and a vav, but uh, 365 has a lot of important properties in both Greek, Hebrew, Hebrew English, um, and just its own. If you think about it, it's 360, the circle, plus 5. So what is 5? The pentagram. So it's literally the, the pentagram. And Venus, again, also makes a pentagram, but Venus has its own sort of charge to it and so does Mars, and basically I think that there's something to all this. Uh, in fact, I know there is. I've, I mean, I'm just slowly finding a way to sort of uh, get into it and go through it piece by piece, because that's really the only way to look at it. You know, the you've got the four elements or the four directions. One through four is 10, so 14, which again is three plus six plus five, is um, like the active elements and 14 is also one more than 13 and there's a verse in Liber Akbish that says but it needs more than 13 and obviously a chad in Hebrew is 13 but in Hebrew English it would be 14 14 is also mentioned in the Pistis Sophia as uh, the sort of 14th eon Yet higher in the 14th eon is a second great invisible God, and another great God called the Great Just One, Christos. He is a power of the three light rulers, which are within all the eons, but without the treasure of light. Here also are numbers of emanations. The powers of this eon will try to detain the disciples in order that they may perform the mysteries of Jesus in those spaces. And so these powers themselves receive further powers from the powers of the light treasure. The disciples, however, are given the proper seals, numbers, and apologies, so that the powers shall withdraw. 
Now the three great rulers are all within these invisibles, i.e. the emanations of the thirteenth and fourteenth eons. But without, the treasure of light are called the triple-powered gods, and are above all others.